So good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We have two hours for this event, and we'll be providing a presentation overview followed by a question and answer period. Um, this meeting is being recorded. So we'll go ahead and get the screen shared and then dive right in. It'll be just a second. We do not have that pulled up quite yet. In the meantime, my name is Kareem Babak and I'm a planner with the Department of Planning and Development. I'm joined by Joe Gorney and Kelly Atkinson, also from DPD. And then we do have a number of DPD staff also on the call to help us field questions. So thank you, Sophia and Katie. And we have Leon O'Donnell also on the call. All right. Over the next two hours, we'll discuss the comprehensive plan, the board authorization, current airport noise policies, an issues paper, and considerations for this plan amendment. We ask that you please hold all questions to the end of the presentation. We have a time devoted for um, Q&A at the end, as well as comments. Next slide, please. Before we discuss the proposed plan amendment, I'll begin with a brief discussion of the comprehensive plan and the zoning ordinance. The comprehensive plan is a policy document that provides recommendations for land use. This is different from the zoning of a property, which is a set of land use regulations or laws that implement the plan. The zoning ordinance identifies allowable uses for particular areas or districts and standards for their use, such as building heights, setbacks, open space, and parking. Next slide, please. The policy plan is part of the comprehensive plan and contains the elements shown here. It elaborates on the countywide land use goals, objectives, and policies adopted by the Board of Supervisors. The proposed plan amendment considers updates to the land use and environment elements of the policy plan. Next slide, please. The comprehensive plan, or plan, is a guide to be used in the decision-making process about the county's natural and built environment and is used by applicants, staff, community members, elected and appointed officials, and others. The plan provides a general land use plan over a long-term horizon. The plan is used when considering land use changes, such as applications to rezone property. The comprehensive plan land use map is a component of the plan and generally designates the plan land uses. The county is divided geographically into four planning areas. The four area plans include general land use guidance along with site-specific recommendations. This proposed comprehensive plan amendment considers updates to area three, which covers the western portion of the county in the vicinity of Dulles Airport and the countywide policy plan. Next slide, please. The airport noise policy plan amendment was authorized by the Board of Supervisors on July 28, 2020. This authorization directed staff to consider an amendment for the relevant land use and environment elements of the policy plan and area plan sections to allow for the consideration of residential uses between the board adopted 60 to 65 DNL airport noise contours with commitments to noise mitigation measures, notification requirements, and construction techniques, which is not currently recommended by the plan. Any revised policy plan guidance would apply countywide. Most jurisdictions in the United States with international airports permit residential uses within the 60 to 65 DNL noise contours, including Loudoun County, and focus on noise abatement measures for their noise sensitive uses already located within that area. It's important to note that this plan amendment would not change any existing land use recommendations of the comprehensive plan. If the board approves this amendment, prior to redevelopment, future site-specific plan amendments would be needed to consider residential uses within areas that are not currently planned for residential use. During that process, as well as the subsequent entitlement process, proposals for residential uses would, would need to address how noise impacts could be adequately mitigated and would need to ensure that future residents would be aware of airport operations. 
The zoning ordinance text and map address airport noise through the establishment of an airport noise impact overlay district, which only addresses land uses within the 65 to 70 DNL noise contour and greater, but does not preclude land uses in areas with noise impacts below 65 DNL. Consideration of this plan amendment would not require changes to the zoning ordinance. Next slide, please. While this is a countywide plan amendment, the impacts are generally limited to the area around Dulles Airport, as this is currently the only area of the county with adopted 60 to 65 DNL noise contours. This area includes the Westfields area and other existing residential developments, parkland, office, and industrial uses. These maps depict the existing land uses in the map on the left and, in the, ba and the base land use recommendations within the 60 to 65 DNL noise contours in the map on the right. The largest existing land uses are single family residential, recreation, and office. The largest planned land uses include mixed use and public parks. With the exception of Land Unit J and the Dulles Suburban Center, which we'll talk about shortly, most of the residential uses currently anticipated by the plan within the 60 to 65 DNL noise contours have been developed, some before the current policy that recommended against residential. These areas are generally stable with limited opportunities for further residential development. While not directly impacted by this plan amendment, it's worth noting that there are two other airports near or within Fairfax County. National Airport, which is located in Arlington County, and Davison Army Airfield, which is located in, within Fort Belvoir. The board has not adopted noise contours associated with Davison. The majority of the noise contours for Davison are restricted to Fort Belvoir, although a small area extends to portions of Fairfax County northwest of the airfield and outside of Fort Belvoir. National Airport is located outside of the county. While flights from National generate noise within portions of Fairfax County, particularly along the Potomac River, no mapped noise contours of greater than 65 DNL associated with National extend into the county. Next slide, please. Much of the existing airport-related plan guidance was adopted in 1997. That plan amendment was focused on Dulles Airport and established a noise contour area of 60 to 65 DNL for the first time for Dulles. Related policies included the establishment of 60 DNL as a threshold above which new residential development would not be recommended. These adopted contours were developed by EMWA in 1993 and adopted by Fairfax County in 1997. These contours reflect the full build out of the airport based on EMWA's 1993 model assumptions. A plan amendment was approved in 2019 that added residential uses as an option for areas of land unit J, generally the Westfields area, of the Dulles Suburban Center in the 60 to 65 DNL noise contours under certain conditions, including mitigation of airport noise impacts. The land unit J action was consistent with federal policy related to airport noise, which although recognizes that noise impacts may occur at levels below 65 DNL, has established 65 DNL as the level above which residential uses would not be considered compatible with an airport. On the map above, the red outlines represent areas that currently have an option in the comprehensive plan for residential uses. The blue shading represents the 60 to 65 DNL noise contours. You can see here that the area impacted by this plan amendment is limited to the areas in blue to the north of land unit J, portions of land unit H, as well as more limited areas on the east side of the airport in blue. As mentioned previously, the area in blue to the south, land, south of land unit J is mostly developed with park and existing residential uses. Next slide, please. Following the adoption of the 2019 plan amendment, the board directed staff to present possible next steps regarding airport noise issues related to Dulles, including obtaining input from, an, from a consultant regarding the proposed 2019 M1 noise contours. In response to the board's direction, the county hired Johnson Aviation, which provided a review of the 2019 M1 noise contour report, including a discussion of new residential uses within the 60 to 65 DNL contours. At the board's land use policy committee meeting on July 21st, 2020, Johnson Aviation reviewed the MWA report. Staff provided a presentation, which included a discussion of the need to balance the economic importance of the airport with the economic development needs of the county, including the provision of housing and the redevelopment or adaptive reuse of existing projects to keep them economically viable. Both the consultant and staff recommended that the board consider a policy change to allow for the consideration of new residential uses between the 60 to 65 DNL airport noise contours countywide. The board also discussed whether to adopt the 2019 M1 contours for Dulles and ultimately decided not to. 
There was also general agreement by the board to authorize a plan amendment to permit the consideration of new residential uses in the 60 to 65 DNL noise contours countywide. An issues paper was published this fall and is intended to provide background information regarding aircraft noise and to identify noise mitigations that could be considered. Next slide. Staff met with acoustical engineers, land use attorneys, and developers to explore the technical issues associated with the introduction of new residential uses between the 60 to 65 DNL noise contours. These topic areas will be considered as potential mitigation strategies that could be included in the comprehensive plan for consideration of residential uses within this contour. I will go over each item individually. Next slide, please. Noise studies are generally submitted to the county for land use proposals with identified noise sources such as highways, aircraft, and railways. Noise modeling is conducted by noise engineers to ensure that the recommended building materials can attenuate the modeled noise impacts to an interior level of 45 DNL for residential uses. Noise studies typically assess noise using the DNL metric, which is a day-night average noise level over a 24-hour period. The DNL noise metric assigns a 10 decibel penalty for noise impacts occurring between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. to account for human sensitivity to noise at night. DNL is the standard noise metric used by the FAA for studies of aviation noise exposure. Airport noise studies take into account peak noise levels experienced during aircraft overflights, which are averaged into the DNL. The FAA has adopted 65 DNL as the threshold for significant noise exposure above which residential uses are not recommended. Recent noise studies for proposed residential developments within Land Unit J have demonstrated that the maximum noise most often experienced for each aircraft overflight is an average of 10 dBA higher than the DNL levels. This led to consideration of different mitigation strategies for the developments. For residential and other noise sensitive uses, county policies recommend the mitigation of interior, interior average sound levels to 45 DNL. Interior noise mitigation typically includes increased sound transmission class or STC ratings for building components to include windows, doors, roofs, and walls. Typical building construction with windows closed can be expected to attenuate noise impacts by approximately 20 decibels. Therefore, it can be expected that the interiors of any new residences built within the board adopted 60 to 65 DNL contours would be attenuated to the average of 45. If there is a desire to enhance attenuation to account for increased noise levels during individual overflights, the county could adopt as part of this plan amendment a performance standard of an outside to inside noise reduction of 25 decibels or more. Construction costs can be expected to increase with enhanced noise reduction, although an additional five decibels of noise attenuation beyond that achieved through normal construction methods, so a total of 25, was estimated to be approximately $5,000 in 2020, depending on the type and the size of the residential unit. The cost started to, starts to increase significantly for attenuation of 30 dBA and greater. Regarding building types, such as single family detached houses, townhouses, or apartments, the acoustical engineers determined that building materials and STC ratings were more critical than the building type. Next slide, please. Current plan guidance states that new development should not expose people to noise in excess of 65 DNL in the outdoor recreation areas of homes. Within the adopted plan text for Land Unit J, mitigation to 65 DNL is encouraged for private active recreation uses, such as the placement of facilities indoors and or enclosing facilities within a flexible or rigid structure, such as a dome. Portions of various outdoor fields, recreation areas, parks, and schools are already located within the board adopted 60 to 65 DNL contours associated with Dulles. This plan amendment does not consider any changes to the current policy. Next slide, please. Commitments to disclosure measures are often sought to help ensure that prospective purchasers and renters are aware of the presence of the airport and its potential associated impacts. Disclosure measures may include legally binding documents, such as avigation easements, and notices and promotional materials, such as brochures, displays, and homeowners association documents. Consideration should be given to commitments such as these at the time of rezoning by the property owner to ensure that future residents are aware of the airport and its noise impacts prior to purchasing homes, along with other commitments to protect the rights of the airport regarding its operations. Next slide, please. Current plan guidance states that post-development noise studies should be conducted if requested to evaluate the effectiveness of noise mitigation measures. However, it might be difficult to implement remedial measures post-construction should noise attenuation goals not be achieved. 
Consideration should be given to conditions that require pre-construction noise modeling for building components, floor plans that reduce exposure to environmental noise impacts, and the submission of verification letters during the site review process certifying that the noise modeled components have been properly installed. Next slide, please. Shown here are the various plan amendment milestones. We're currently in the community outreach stage and expect to have draft language available in the spring with public hearings scheduled in May and June. Next slide, please. Shown here is our contact information. And at this point, we'd like to open the meeting up to questions. Um, we, can we can stop sharing the screen now if it's easier to see everyone that way. How do you want to take it? Just speak up to ask one? Yeah, so we have a pretty small crowd here with us today. Um, if you um, want to get, you know, get in a queue to, uh, to ask a question, maybe just drop your name in the chat. Um, I think you all have the ability to mute and unmute yourselves um, so we can call on people um, as we go through. Um, but Keith, it sounds like you might have, uh, maybe have a question. So if you want to. I do want to go first and then if people, anybody else who wants to talk, um, just drop your name in the chat or you can drop your question in the chat as well. Either one. Okay. Well, first of all, thank you very much for having it on on the two days. I do appreciate it. And I, I do uh, approach this from, you know, the experience of being at Dulles from 77 to 2005 and being the airport manager there for 16 years. And actually living in the area when Dulles was constructed in 1962 out in the middle of nowhere, you know, in a field to protect it from residential development because the other alternate site was Burke, you know, off of uh, Shirley Highway or 295, 395. So the thing that really alarmed me is in one of the slides, it has work with MWA on nighttime noise activity. I mean, that is the first step to approving all this residential work right underneath the flight path. These airplanes are gonna be 800 feet or whatever above your head. And to, to approve that and then turn around and get a bunch of noise complaints and then turn around after that and having the county petition the airport to reduce activity at night, evening, you know, that type of activity. The airport is a huge economic engine for this region. It's a huge provider of jobs. When you look down the rest and, you know, the Dulles Access Corridor and you see all those Fortune 500 companies and worldwide corporations, they're there primarily because of two reasons. One is the airport with the access to the world and the markets, and two, the access to Washington, D.C. And if we do something to kill the golden goose and make a, a decision that maybe sound good in the short term, Ultimately hurt in the long run. It, it's really a disservice to the community, to the county, and and to the local economy. So I would urge the county to, you know, we did the study in '93. Mm -hmm. You folks adopted it. We did the current one now that updates the current conditions. Um, multiple simultaneous approaches. The fourth runway, the fifth runway will be built. Um, we need a crosswind runway there desperately, um, and that. United's growth is going to require that. And I just ask you, you know, that we need to not permit residential, further residential encroachment down there. That's it. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. And um, we are, we, I'm, act, I'm capturing everyone's comments and all the different uh, community outreach that we're doing. And, um, you know, we will be sharing this information. I, I know the planning commission and the board will ask us about community outreach and the type of feedback that we're hearing. Um, so your, your, your comments are noted. Great, Kelly. Thank you. And also, thank you very much for giving me the new, the one I had before had both for Thursday and for Saturday. I appreciate the updates so I could, I could attend this one. Thank you. I have a follow up on that, if I may. Go ahead. Um, yeah, so um, I have also lived here. Uh, again, this is Cynthia Shang. I was on the uh, Thursday meeting, so I, I spent a lot of time going back through the Ricondo report and the Johnson Aviation report and the staff 
uh, recommendations and the meeting. And, um, you know, one of the big concerns that I have, because I live uh, currently in the 60 to 65 DNL zone, which um, uh, you, given the new updates to the M1 map, and I can tell you that it was a blessing uh, COVID because at night, um, there are many times we can't sleep because we're constantly interrupted by the heavy cargo planes coming overhead. Um, so there's no way to keep your windows open at night. If you enjoy fresh air, you might as well just forget that. Um, so, so my question here is that, uh, you know, the, uh, Barbara of staff had believed that, um, and, and everybody else had recommended that we work with EMWA uh, to develop some overnight plans, but their preference is, of course, to move toward more cargo traffic coming in, and which makes sense. But if we are ignoring their new contours, which state that you know, there's some areas where now we shouldn't be resi re building residential developments. Um, the report was saying we should work with them so that we could sort of mitigate these by um, possibly asking them to use preferential runways. Well, if you're building all of these new homes and residences in those flight paths, in those runway paths, then which runway would be pre preferential? They're all going to be impacted by these more heavy cargo planes and these later nighttime trafficking. Um, so I, I'm 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 trying to understand how that is going to work if we're not even working with them now. If we're refusing to use their new contours, then then we go back as uh, was just previously stated. Then we go back and say, oh yeah, now we're getting all these noise complaints. What are we going to do about it? Let's try to use these other runways. Oh, we can't because everybody's living there too. Um, so I think you know one of the directions from Johnson Aviation, their very very first direction was to adopt the 65 DNL contours. It says consider the use of the MWA ultimate 65 DNL contours plus the county's NLR criteria for new residential. We haven't done that. We didn't even do the first recommendation that they sent. So um, I'm, I just really would like to understand how we're going to mitigate these heavier cargo planes and these nighttime traffics when we're going to continue to build uh, in the areas where those uh, lights will occur. Yeah, this is Joe Gorney of uh, DPD uh, Planning Division. One of the staff members on the line today. In, in terms of the contours, um, the board looked at those at this time and and as um, I know we stated in the open house on Thursday night, that is not part of um, what we're considering here with this particular authorization. So the board directed us to do the various things that uh, Kareem mentioned in her, in her presentation. Um, the consideration of the adoption of those contours was not part of our, our consideration. So we are not looking into that. However, I, I will say that you and a number of people have talked about that issue and certainly we will bring that issue forward to the board of supervisors with all the other input um that uh update was based on updated assumptions uh, by emwa and and you know the methodology was was similar to what we have done since 1977 1983 1993 and, and then 2019. so I, I i think the long and short of it for the contours is um, even if that action does not happen today, tomorrow, that, that certainly is a possibility. That's something there. And I think um, the, the board is taking all input on this. Again, this authorization is not looking at that specifically, uh, but obviously as public input, we'll pass along that message. And certainly, you know, everyone has the opportunity to, to bring that forward too. Um, in, in terms of night operations and such, um, Obviously, the FAA, not MWA, but FAA is the one who controls the airspace um, around the various. They control whether you know you land on this runway or that runway based on separation, based on winds, based on weather, um, based on safe operations of all of those aircraft. So MRA does not, in particular, they are not as the operators of the airfield. They are not necessarily well. They are not controing the airplanes that are out there. That's the purview of the federal government. Um, 
we are starting a conversation with the FAA regarding national airport and the usage of that particular runway. Um, and, and it's seen as, as having a conversation with them. It's a multi-year conversation, however, to impact the operations that do happen in a particular airfield. Um, so I don't necessarily see this as, as limiting the um, operations of the cargo haulers and whatnot. Uh, again, those decisions are made by the FAA and we have an opportunity as a jurisdiction to speak with them about air, aircraft and the usage of a particular runway. Um, and we will continue to do so as we are engaged, the community is engaged with national and uh, we'll, we expect to continue to do so if, if necessary, wherever it may be, Dulles National as, as needed. Thank you, Joe. Uh, three comments, Joe. I, I worked FAA for 28 years. Uh, FAA is very much in tune with what communities want to do about their airports. So <clears throat> the community should decide what they want, and they should let the FAA know about that, and they should let the airport know about that. And the airport works very closely with the FAA. The FAA works very closely with the airlines on questions about noise. So see yourself in the driver's seat, not the victim of what the FAA is going to do. The FAA will do as best they can what we wish of them and what the airport wishes of them and what our priorities are and what our concerns are. So don't don't write all the comments as, as, help, as helpless in the face of the mighty FAA. That is not the situation. Secondly, I, you should advise the, the Board of Supervisors that they must accept the 2019 noise contours that the airport has developed. Your, your consultant recommended that the Board of Supervisors accept those contours. And if you don't accept them, this whole exercise is meaningless because you're talking about whether or not development should be allowed between two contours that the airport says are not are not relevant to their future. Does that make sense? The airport's the expert on the noise. The, 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 the consultant says what they are recommending you should pay attention to, and you're gonna suggest that we should now have a long debate about residential development among contours that have nothing to do <clears throat> in expert opinion with our future. So your question is ridiculous on that basis. I'm sorry, ridiculous. Is, I don't mean to sound <laughs> I sound aggressive in that, but it, it, it's really a meaningless question. The airport says here are the contours and the county says, well, here's some other contours. What do you think about residential development um, between those contours? Doesn't make any sense. Do you, am I making sense, Joe? My yeah, sense? Yeah, we okay. Did you hear that? Your and, comments are well taken, and um, we absolutely will pass those along. Thank you. I don't mean to dominate the conversation, but I did say I have three comments. My third <laughs> comment is you must write these comments down and and put them in front of the Board of Supervisors when you provide the feedback to the Board of Supervisors. I've sat through endless meetings of the of the land use policy committee where staff has come to the Board of Supervisors and said, well, on, the, on this question, there's some people that agree with us and think it's a good idea, and there's some people who think it's not a good idea. And that's the feedback that the Board of Supervisors gets on questions like ZMOD. That's the kind of feedback that the Board of Supervisors got from staff on ZMOD. Some people like it and some people don't. And, and that's not effective feedback to the Board of Supervisors. You must write these comments down. It'll be a long list. It'll be a long list of comments, you know, just not word for word, of course, but, but from Keith's comments before, he's experienced in the background. He thinks it's not a good idea because of X, Y, Z. You know, it's just two lines. It doesn't have to have the person's name on it. It was in this meeting and, and meeting by meeting where, where 
where citizens and residents give feedback on this subject, you must write out the comment and make it available to the Board of Supervisors and to the public. That's very important. Thank you. Those are my three comments. Yes. Yeah, thank, thank you for so. sharing that. Um, you know, we, we are preparing, you know, a and a document um, of some of the comments that we are getting from the community. Um, it's kind of wrapped around a few high level, you know, a few, a few common themes. Um, and I, we can certainly express that, um, um, that you know, there has been, I mean, that's the number one question or the number one comment is the board not adopting the 2019 contours. And so I think that that message is going to be loud and clear in the Q and a document that we're providing that. This is why the board didn't adopt it and here are the concerns and why the concerns we're hearing from the community as to the impacts of not adopting those contours. So oh, thank you for thank that. You, we'll make sure that gets included in our Q and a document. Thank you, Kelly. That's, that's very good to have the Q and A's. You must write out each comment. You must write down Cynthia's comment about living and having the aircraft come over and between the 1665 and it keeps her awake at night. You must write that down and contribute to a comment that was given at this at this meeting, not put it into a Q&A to say, so uh, your question is, are people concerned about noise? Well, some people are and some people aren't. That's not helpful. You must, I mean, that is helpful, sorry, but you must write down each comment and put it in front of the Board of Supervisors as feedback you're getting so they understand just what the concerns are. It's very important. All this, all this time and energy is going in. There's a four staff people on this call. Thank you. That's great. But that's a lot of investment in this call. And the answer to get back to the board from this call shouldn't be some people expressed concerns and some people didn't. It's not and helpful. I, and I highly agree with that because we sending emails to the board of supervisors and the clerk of the county, all we do is have those emails go into a black void. Uh, attending meetings and making comments is like talking to a box of rocks. Um, so we're relying on you as staff um, because you have more weight in what you say to them and in how they hear it. So please, thank you. I reinforce what Clyde just said. Thank you very much. And just one more word, and I'm sorry, I don't mean to dominate the conversation. I will tell you in FAA rulemaking, which uh, is my background, some of, when they put out a proposed rule, like to allow it to, a runway change at National Airport or whatever, they publish it in the Federal Register, a proposed rule, and each and every comment that comes back on that rule is written down and they write down what their resolution is. If they rejected the comment, if they didn't accept the comment for, X, for reason X, or they did for reason Y and what they did about it. So anybody that commented, on that rule would be able to go back and see their comment written out. The agency saw the comment and here's what they did about it. Now, I'm not saying you should write down what you're going to do about it, but as a minimum, the board should know what the comments are. Thank you. Nope, that's a great idea. And I, I just started the Q and a document yesterday and I just made a note to make sure that we're including, you know, perhaps as like an appendix to the Q and a like open house. Number 1, these were the comments that we heard yeah. Open house. Number 2, here's the comments we heard. So it's a great suggestion. It's a way to improve our communications. So that's, that's why we're here. We're here to get the feedback. Yeah. A lot of people in quiet, Kelly. I wanted to I wanted to add another comment. Is I was thinking to what was said earlier. Why? I mean, the question is, why would the county want to replicate the pain and the trauma that they're having over the Mount Vernon area out here in the Sully area? You know, to me, it makes it makes no sense. I mean, you've got the supervisor down in Mount Vernon. Who has the airport, the FAA, everybody meeting round a table? I forget the frequency, arguing about aircraft overflights for an air, airport that was built way back when, when they had a road that ran through it, you know, and and all that development down there that's been there for ages. And why would the county want to replicate and develop the same sort of situation out west here? Um, the other thing, and the the other comment I wanted to make was, if the county First of all, I mean, follow the science is the latest sort of thing. The latest science is a 2019 contour it needs to be adopted. Then we need to work off of that. And if the county persists 
and ended up putting housing between 60 and 65. We have to really, really make sure that those people, like I think it was Cynthia said earlier, are aware when they buy the house and when they sell the house to the next owner and the next owner and the next owner, that there are airplanes up there and you will be subjected to noise. And if you like to sleep with your windows open, you aren't gonna be able to. And if you wanna to talk to your kids in the backyard, you aren't gonna be able to. And if you don't wanna have interference, you know, on your radio or whatever with an airplane flying overhead, you aren't gonna be able to have that. To put the information out there so people know the, the environment that they're moving into. Because the airport does want to be a good neighbor. It does want to, you know, be the provider of the economy and the jobs for this area. And uh, they're trying their damnedest. I'll shut up. Sorry. Thank you, Keith. And part of what we're looking at with this plan amendment is those exact disclosures that you're talking about and providing that information when people are purchasing and renting their, their future homes. So um, an example of that is with the land unit J um, adopted plan text that we have right now. Uh, when we see development proposals for areas in land unit J, we do see developments um, proffering to provide those disclosures, providing those maps, providing all of that information to the future homeowners. Um, so, so we are, we are looking at that as well. So thank you for that suggestion. And you know, Kelly, in, in your defense and Elm street and other developers, they're very good about that. Uh, now, I mean, when we bought, when we moved down here in 77, and then we moved in 83 again I don't um, know. in the County, in the Sully area. I mean, the realtor wouldn't take you around between two and four in the afternoon because Dulles was active. You know, they took you around in the off times when Dulles wasn't active. And you had this nice, pristine countrywide, you know, countryside sort of setting. The, the, the county has been a lot better. The staff has in the county and enforcing it. The developers have been very good about putting it in their sales offices and all that. The problem is the second and third owners downstream. That's where it gets dropped. And that's where I don't know how we do it through the Northern Virginia Realtors Association or whatever, but that's where the notification and when people call and anecdotal information when people call the airport screaming about noise and where these airplanes come they never heard them before they they never a lot of them were never advised you know because they're the third and fourth homeowner down the stream and um unless it's part of an hoa and that's part of the yeah. problem and keith that's a good point and um the the attachment five we have in the issues paper um, the disclosure statements and um, having worked on a few of the land unit J cases, intimately familiar with what the developers are proffering. Um, you know, it does talk about that the disclosure would be in the sales con contract, the master community documents um, to give notice to all initial and subsequent purchasers, as well as inclusion in the land records. So that sort of stuff would come up, you know, on the schedule B in the title report when someone is buying a property after the initial homeowner. So, yes, we share the same concern. We don't want it to just be the initial property owner. We want it to be all subsequent as well. So your point's well taken. Yeah, and, and since nobody else is jumping out, as, a, as an example, when I was airport manager, when we connected the Dulles Access Highway to 66, and I can tell you, I had to go down to the hill to talk to lawyers who had townhouses or houses that backed up to that land that had a giant easement through it that was federal property. And when we started cutting down the trees to build the road, they were in shock and awe that this thing was ever happening and couldn't believe it. And their lawyers, supposedly smart, educated people who didn't know that easement behind them, you know, that's what I'm saying about these easements. They tend to get lost when you don't when you don't use them. But it's just does um does anyone else have a comment or a question for us? And just a reminder, if you know, if you're part of HOAs or other groups, um, we, like Kareen said, we are recording both this meeting and Thursday's meeting. Um, so we do on Monday plan to post both recordings as well as the PowerPoint presentation that Kareen uh, provided today. Um, so you'll be able to access that, share that with other people. Obviously it has our contact information. So this is not the last time for, uh, for, for feedback opportunities. You can provide feedback up into the Board of Supervisors hearing. And uh, just following off of Kelly's point, if you're uncomfortable speaking up in this meeting, feel free to email us. We monitor the inbox regularly and do respond to inquiries. So 
if this is not your venue, there is still opportunities for input. Yeah, and another comment is that uh, when you're looking on the website, uh, we tried to put already, we may reorganize it just a little bit, but we do have a lot of links within the issues paper and then uh, especially in the attachments. And so there are the various studies, uh, which, which folks uh, like Cynthia already mentioned. Uh, we do have the, um, our consultant Johnson's Aviation from a number of months ago, their report is linked in there. Um, along obviously the issues paper, a letter that we sent to the FAA um, regarding their neighborhood environmental survey and, and other type things. But if you, you look in those and, and poke around a little bit, um, there's a decent amount of information which which could help inform your comments um, as we go forward with this. Obviously tonight, some of you have already looked at that, but even going forward, when we get involved with the planning commission, their committees, the board of supervisors, their committees, and then even move to public hearings, um, those are all good things that could inform you as a community. And is that the link that for the January 21st, 2020 meeting or which, which page are you referring to? Well, the issues paper was uh, put on the website in November of 2021. And then there was a land use policy committee meeting that meant at in uh, July of 2020, July 21st. And there's a link, I think the very last page probably of our issues paper um, that has a link to that. You could also search if you want to click a lot through the county website that would go to the board meetings and, and all of those presentations and documents associated with that particular meeting um, and, and other meetings, of course, would be linked. Um, so that's that's there. Kelly, it looks like she just put in the chat box the, um, the plan amendment. Uh, that this is under consideration today. There's also another web page maintained by the Department of Planning and Development that has some other airport and noise related information, not specific to the plan amendment, but some of it is definitely germane to this discussion. And you could click on those resources as well. I'd had yeah. a hand up. And it looks like, yeah, Cynthia just posted in the chat box that link for the July 21st, 2020 meeting. Which, and if you go to that, there were a number of items on the agenda, airport being one of them that had about, um, had about five different documents associated with it. And it looks like Clyde has his hand up. Yes, thank you. I wanted to comment on Heath's comment. You, you uh, sort of went on beyond me. Um, the, the important point, maybe for staff to recognize, for all of us to recognize, is there's a very the danger here for the airport is very simple and that is that residents complain about noise i think keith's made that point and and over time that that comes to the airport say you got to do something about the noise you have to curtail your operations in some respect so that there's less community noise exposure and that cripples the airport there's a very long history in in civil aviation in this country and worldwide of residential development encroaching upon airports, crippling airports. It takes years, but it's insidious. And, 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 and notices to prospective home buyers, even navigation easements, do not prohibit residents from complaining about annoying noise. They're, they're a good idea and they should be done, but they don't stop complaints about noise and complaints about noise stop airports. And that's that's the danger in what the county is proposing. It's very simple. That's the danger in what the county is proposing. Just as Keith spoke of it, why do you want to do to Dallas Airport what has happened to National Airport? There's a long history at National Airport of adjusting itself to noise complaints. Thank you. And Clyde, thank you for that. And um, I, I, I believe you, you know, you watched the the committee meeting back in uh, June of 2020. And I, I think the board was, you know, was numerous board members were very clear about the importance of uh, of Dulles to Fairfax County as well as the region. And um, there is not an intentional um, any intentionality on their part to, to to harm the airport. It is an important infrastructure. It is an economic driver for the county's growth. 
Um, so they are approaching this, you know, I, I think with some level of you know caution and um, trying to balance a bunch of competing needs. Um, so I just I do want to say that the board does recognize that Douglas is important Kelly, uh, to our economy. Kelly, my point is the board does not recognize this. There were comments from the board in the in the July 2020 meeting that what we do here will have no effect on the airport. There was a comment from one supervisor that the, that that the assertion that residents noise complaints will cripple the airport is a false narrative is the word that the supervisor spoke. So the board needs to be educated that this proposal is is dangerous for the airport, just as Keith described. The past airport manager at Dulles Airport has told you that this is dangerous for the airport. And from my FAA background, I can tell you this is dangerous for the airport. It must be done very carefully. And it should be done exactly the way your consultant recommended. Accept the noise contour, do a do a an analysis of whether or not there should be residential development between 60 and 65. And when you've done that analysis with the airport, make a decision as to whether or not you're going to change the policy about residential development at the airport. Your issue paper says that the consultant recommended that the that the Board of Supervisors consider a policy change. The consultant did not recommend that. The, rec the consultant recommended what I just said. He said, do a study about, about the possibility of the residential development. When you've done the study with the airport, make a decision on whether or not you're gonna change your policy. They're, two, they're very different. So your consultant is right on, I think, I don't know if Keith's had an opportunity to read the consultant's report. I've, I've been through it several times. It's right on, it's perfect. That's what the board, that's what the board should do. It's a very sensible approach. There's no hurry to do this. Let's get it right. Thank you. Yeah, Clyde, I did. The other thing, Clyde just brought up thing that reminds the airlines. What people, you know, we who live in Washington think the world circles around us. And I'm here to tell you that as far as United Airlines is a hub carrier at Dulles, but United Airlines is not a public service entity. They're a, a profit making corporation and their asset is extraordinarily portable and they can move that in an instant. Now, National Airport is a different animal because it's so close to DC and everything else that that airport's gonna keep operating forever, you know, as many people who can go in there. But Dulles is not. It took us a long time to build up the air service we've got there now. And if we start putting restrictions on airlines flying in there, they're gonna end up taking that asset and moving it somewhere else. And you look around the country, you look at Cincinnati, which is huge corporate interests and everything else there. Those people have to drive to Dayton, Ohio to fly out. They don't have a real viable airport anymore. Cleveland, up and down all the time. And that hub that United has here could disappear and they could consolidate a door. They could go somewhere else at Charlotte, do it there, compete with American. I mean, there's there's a number of things, but they there's nothing that anchors them here except for people flying and people fly when they want to fly. And that's when you're, you know, five o'clock, six o'clock at night, that's early in the morning, that's late 11 o'clock at night when you're coming back. And United could move that if some other city is more inviting to them and they can make more money and they'll do that. So it's not, you know, it's it's not like, and I, I've been around and visited all the supervisors and I keep telling them, United and the hub at Dulles is not guaranteed. And if the public outcry creates limitations to their operation, they could very well be gone. Thank you. And we have noted those comments and we'll, we'll pass them on as we um, continue on with the outreach and reporting back on what we've heard from the community. So thank you. It is appreciated. Are there um, any other questions from anyone in the audience? Sorry, Clyde and Keith going to give you guys a, a time out for a minute. See if anyone else has questions. If no one else does feel free to chime back in though. Want to make sure everyone has time to speak. OK, 
Okay, I don't see anything so quiet in Keith if you guys have um, any other comments. I'm sorry, were you speaking to me? Oh, I was just saying if you guys had any other comments, I didn't no, see I anyone else uh, chime speaking. in. No. Yeah, I mean, we had two hours for this meeting, but I think in light of um, the fact that we're not hearing from too many other people or, or um, kind of, you know, hearing some things that we've previously heard, um, you know, we, we may stop at noon, but certainly if there's a need to continue to one, we can, we don't want to, we don't want to short anybody's time, but also don't want to, um, pro, uh, you know, if you guys have other things to do this weekend, don't want to hold you up from that, but do you want to give you the opportunity to, to say everything um, you want to say if you're in this meeting? No, I'll, I'll, I promise you, I will quit at this comment that uh, when we developed, we sat down for the development of the 2019 contours and I was not, I'm not part of MWOC, represent the Washington Airports Task Force, and we were a stakeholder in that group, as was Fairfax County throughout the development of those noise contours. There were Fairfax County planning staff that were in those meetings and, you know, and monitored the development the whole way through. So it's not, the, the noise contours were something that should not have been a surprise to the county, you know, at all. And thank you all very much for the opportunity and Maybe I'll go try to get some of the ice off my driveway. Thank you. Thank you and, and good luck. Okay. So, oh, oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> I was going to say, if there's no other comments, um, we will, um, we'll go ahead and wrap this up. Um, again, not your last opportunity to provide feedback. Um, we will be taking comments, um, up to the end. So feel free to, to, if you have anything you think of afterwards, feel free to send us an email, um, and we will respond to you. Look forward for the Q and a document, you know, give us. Give us some time to, to prepare that. Like I said, I started it, but it's going to take some time to kind of prepare that and flesh out some responses. So we will get that up um, and we will be sharing um, your, your feedback with um, the appointed and elected officials. Kelly, could you just do one final thing uh, in the chat? Maybe um, can you post uh, when the next, when the Board of Supervisors meeting is on this particular topic and also maybe the general email uh, contact for you guys? Thanks. Yeah, uh, Kareem, do you want to drop the, uh, the the email in there and I'll work on the, um, I'll put in both. Um, so we're going to have uh, committee meetings before both the Planning Commission and the Board of Supervisors. So I'm going to drop those dates in as well as the public hearing. The committee meetings, there isn't really an opportunity for um, for, for community feedback as part of that. It's more like a working session between the, the commission and the staff. Um, but the public hearings, definitely, that is an opportunity for um, for you to participate in that process. Looks like Corrine has the email in there right now. And all of that info is getting dropped into the chat now and is available on our website too. So if we don't have any other questions, I do really want to thank you guys for coming out and spending your Saturday with us. Um, we really do appreciate the feedback. It is helpful and it it, it is necessary in these processes. So um, thank you again. And I hope you guys enjoy your Saturdays. Um, no crazy snowstorms right, or any you. of that. Thank you. Sorry, I'm still working on those last dates. I had to confirm the, confirm a couple things. PC is planning commission, right? Sorry, yes. yes. I was trying to get them off before everybody was leaving. Okay, no <laughs> so, worries. Thank you. Yeah, the May and the June dates are the public hearings. All right. Thanks, everyone. Kareen, if you want to stop the recording and close yeah. the meeting, we can do that. All right. Thank you, guys.